Uh, Mayor Owens, are you present? Present. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Selby. Commissioner Mann. Commissioner Borland. Present. Commissioner Burke. Present. Commissioner Walker. And Commissioner Collins. Hello. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, you have four members uh, present, so therefore you have a quorum. All right. Well, let's, uh, we'll have the meeting up with we'll a moment of silent meditation if we can. All right, let's have the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Start it right, James. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America. and the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, one nation, one nation. under God, liberty and justice for all. All right, that's, that's good enough. That's a poor rendition, but it's good as we can do. <laughs> All right, we've got to have adoption of the agenda. Can we have a motion to adopt the agenda? I move to adopt the agenda as presented. It's Commissioner Boyle. All right, is right. a second? Uh, Commissioner Burke, second. All right, the motion uh, to uh, adopt the agenda with a second. Uh, call the roll. Thank you, sir. Um, let's see. On the store with the folks present, um, we'll go to Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Okay. All right, we have uh, a majority. Uh, we'll do the adoption of the agenda. I yes, guess sir. we move on to the consent agenda now, James Wright. Yes, sir. Consent agenda. We've got four items on it, and this is for action. All right. Uh, can we have a motion? Yes, sir. I motion to approve the consent agenda. All right. Is there a second? I'll second, Commissioner Borland. All right. Motion by Daryl, second by uh, Jason, that we approve the consent agenda. All in favor, take a roll, James. Thank you, sir. Um, in terms of this, we'll go to Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. All right, Mr. Mayor. Right. You have a okay. unanimous vote from the members, um, from the commissioners present. Okay, let's move on. Thank you, sir. Item number five on the agenda. This is presentations reports. This is for information. Item number eight, item number 5A was proposed to be a presentation on transitional housing. This was to be presented by DARE Minority Coalition Executive Director George Carver. Uh, although uh, Mr. Carver uh, did send over materials, perhaps he is delayed because he's not present in the, in the meeting room at this point. Or he, uh, Mr. Mayor, if I may ask, we may ask for a brief pause. Our, um, the, the, first, the first person on the presentations, Mr. George Carver, the Executive Director of the DARE Minority Coalition is here and is okay. available to make his presentation on transitional housing. Okay, let him start off. Is he up at the, uh, however he wants to do it, whatever he wants to do is fine. George? Good afternoon. Oh, there you are. Okay, go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm George Carver, the executive director of DARE Minority Coalition. And I actually want to talk about transition housing. Um, I want to be very clear about the definitions and phase, um, phasal, and the actually um, the importance of the terms that will be used. It's not essential housing or low income housing. Like I, like I said, this is transitional housing. Our uh, most important services will be uh, priorities. That's finding appropriate housing and the priority for, for our case managers. The follow-up including linkage to community-based supportive services, 
to help the families maintain houses and the primary focus after housing is attained. The case manager goal is to monitor the family's progress and to link families with <clears throat> primary support services and systems, not to act as a primary support. And B, service levels and coordination. Case managers are the primary case managers and advocates for all issues pertaining to permanent housing. Clients would be assisted to determine proper housing needs and provide the list of appropriate housing options with case managers acting as advocates when needed. Assistance to obtain needed documentations, appointments with other community agencies and financial assistance would be provided. Families must keep case managers informed on their goals. Example, if these um, clients wanted to um, move after attaining certain um, financial support from the county or from us, I'm saying they should let the caseworkers know ahead of time and their primary goals. D, um, the credit and financial planning. For example, PNC could be the financial institute where it'll be assisting in this matter. They assist in um, money management classes um, through our connections with the housing counseling with the hotline, so to speak. And they will be having accounts set up for these individual families to maintain their essential goals as far as having different and their financials set up. So when they are attaining new housing, they'll be in a position to actually attain new housing through PNC and with the support of our case management. Legal assistance and linkage. Um, case managers have also asked, access family legal needs, advocates for resolutions of legal problems and making appropriate referrals. And as you can see up here, this is an example of some of the, of one of the houses that I was looking to use for transition housing. Um, the top floor, I believe is the three bedrooms and the bottom four is um, two bedrooms. Um, as you can see, the square footage of these properties, there are decent sized houses. They kind of um, look similar to those 15 bedroom condos on the beach road in um, Kill Devil Hills and Kitty Hawk. But these were be like at a smart, uh, smaller units um, placed in, let's say like an acre and you be able to should be able to fit like six of these. I would say five, so you can have like some type of grounding and support. But the main thing about the transition housing is um, mm -hmm. going through our program, partnering with the hotline. They will actually be in our program from 18 months to two years max. And this will actually give them enough time to build a credit, to actually find the actually uh, financial support they need to, to actually buy their own homes and be supported through that way. And also, Dare Minority Coalition, we have, um, we are a partner, or we actually have our branch office. It's called PC Real Estate Firm. It's like Remax and Century 21, but it's a nonprofit. Um, it's the largest, if not the only nonprofit that deals with real estate. That will include um, attaining foreclosed homes and also HUD homes. So we're not actually looking for building a large acreage to actually do multiple developments when you can actually use foreclosed homes to actually put these individuals that's going through our program in these homes. And um, being that PC Real Estate is a nonprofit, we be able to get these pro properties um, not as much as anybody else that's actually been it on them because we'd be partnering with the federal government as far as like getting these homes. And uh, PC Real Estate is now when I started um, the branch office here um, in Nags Head, where, is, where Devon North Dakota Coalition main office is located, um, we was at 12 locations throughout the state, well, throughout the country. Now we're up to 18 different locations and our um, headquarters is actually in Charlotte. So we, like, we're located in New York, Texas, California, um, Atlanta, Tennessee. So like I said, there's 18 different states. And I just want to um, let the town know that we are willing to work with them if they have any, you say, property that could be used for these transition houses that could be built 
Um, we'll be responsible for attaining um, experienced engineers to actually get the, the job done. And just like you can see here, we will keep y'all updated if agreed upon on any property that could be used for transition housing. I know so transition housing and being a community development corporation, we are willing to work with individuals throughout the community that has abandoned houses that needs a little upkeep and if they're willing to give us access to their properties, these houses not big enough that would take up all the property is big enough to actually, it looks like a normal home, but it's actually five bedrooms that can be accessed on their properties. So, at, and after, let's say 15 X amount of years, this property or this development would actually be the landowners because you're not looking for no titles. So after the house is paid for or the development is paid for through, we call it um, tenant vouchers, which we begin from the state. And as soon as it's applied for uh, with our transition housing, um, it's paid for up until the development is actually paid for itself. That's either the transitional stage between uh, families moving in and out. So there's no lapse in non-payment. It's always gonna be um, taken care of as far as like dealing with the state. And I passed out some other incentives <laughs> we'll be working with also as far as transition housing is um, inmates is working on re-entry, uh, working with the recovery court. So it's not it's like we have a, we don't have a lack of uh, participants or clients, so to speak. So um, like I said, working with the financial institute and also the hotline, the recovery courts, and also educating individuals on the importance of finances is, is very crucial in this transitional stage. So. Once they go through the stage of learning, let me say how to manage the money and um, the, the importance of the built of credit, they can move on and purchase their homes through our programs. And we will have like, experienced individuals, like I said, through the hotline, um, our financial institutes, and also the recovery courts in these matters. Is there any questions, anyone? <clears throat> Any, yes, any, any commissioners have any comments? Yeah, this is uh, Commissioner Borland. I, first of all, I mean, you're doing good work in the community and that's much appreciated and, and uh, I hope you continue what you're doing. Um, I, I think I need a little clarification on um, exact ask or, you know, I mean, we, we talked about um, and we don't really need to beat around the bush. We, there's certain properties, you know, that, that right. could be used for this like the one we just annexed, right? That we don't know what we're gonna do with or, or other properties. Um, but what would be the, uh, where would, where does funding come from to, um, do you have access to grants or you, in terms of building the actual the building? The actual saying once we um, actually acquire the property that's gonna be used, um, the grants um, will be attained through um, state um, means. And being that we are a CDC and partner with a much experienced um, PC real estate firm, we have the leverage and also hotline as been as one of our council managers that would be um, dealing with um, the clients on this on a hand to hand basis. So that would come from, like I said, the state and um, I want I don't want to say federal level because I was trying to keep it local like state level. So as I think it's enough funds in um, North Carolina to actually get this done. We're not looking at like um, anywhere from like 20, we're not looking for $20 million like types of grants like that, but anywhere from like at least up to upwards of like 2 million to actually have, let's say like an acre um, developed with like six of these developments. Do you need the, um, I mean, is it, are you able to get those kind of grants or access to those funds before having property committed that um i'm saying i would say no um, it depends on because when you apply for these grants they want to know right. the, the um, being in finance you know i'm saying they want all the details on the budget and what's going to be approved for it if they don't want to say if you're not going to them with okay i'm spending five hundred thousand dollars on this property they want to know is the property attained and where it's going to be mm -hmm. if i don't have access to these properties i can't put it in in the budget and apply for the grant appropriately. So I wouldn't put our organization in, in that predicament to start something that can't be finished. Gotcha. 
Hey, George, this is Commissioner Collins. Uh, do y'all have any properties right at right now? Hold on. Say that again, Mr. Collins. I'm sorry. Uh, do you have any properties that you're working with right now? Um, I have been in contact with a few um, individuals, um, definitely around the Hansard area that would like their property that they're actually using or not using to be evaluated and to actually to show an example of how these homes can be done. Um, I actually, I'm in a position now using my personal property, which is no longer will be my personal property, be the property of their minority coalition to actually put up three of these homes. I appreciate everything you did, man. No problem, Mr. Gallus. Thank you. All right. Any other questions uh, of George? All right, George, thank you so much for coming. And, George, I will say this is awfully awkward because of this COVID-19. We should all have been there, but I'm purposely staying home to stay out of this mess that's going on, and I guess other commissioners are too. So thank you for your presentation, and we will bring it up at a later date. I can assure you that. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Okay. All right, uh, James. Yes, Update sir. on town sponsored events. Yes, sir. Uh, I decided number, number 5B on the agenda for information. Um, in this particular case, we wanted to finalize some details of activities that we had uh, shared with the board at the prior meeting. And of course, we are we would be excited to um, bring on additional additional feedback and ideas from what may be a soon to be uh, appointed special events committee. In the meantime, though, uh, we're working with the team that was noted last time. We have a, several baskets of activities. So let's take, let's, we're trying to do a mix of the old and the new. And again, we're trying to promote holiday spirit here in the town of Manio. So let's start with a, a, the basket of activities related to businesses. And the first one is a, a longstanding tradition here in the town. This is the business wreath contest. In fact, this activity is already underway. This has traditionally been coordinated by the Roanoke Island Garden Club. Um, in fact, businesses were contacted by the club the first week of November and hand delivering the uh, wreaths that had been obtained by the town, either the ones we had in prior years or new ones to replace some of the older ones. Um, so the businesses who choose to participate, they will decorate the wreaths and there's no particular theme. It's whatever their creativity will allow. And they are to deliver them to town hall no later than Monday, November 30th from 10 to 3. Then the wreaths will be judged just like they have been in prior years on that day and winners would be announced that afternoon. Now the four winning wreaths will be hung in, in key locations in the town and the traditional ones, two at the entrance to the Christmas tree parking lot and two on either side of the old courthouse, the Dare County Arts Council building. Now there will be some some video. We've got a, 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 a special a special host uh, host is planned for the uh, the actual videoing of the winners and and providing, uh, providing good information on them and we'll give an information about the wreaths. Also, the rest of the wreaths will be placed in special places throughout town by town staff and the names of all participating businesses and locations will be published in the Coastland Times as a parade of wreaths. Now, the wreaths will be removed first week of January, but this is one of the very first things that kicks off the season uh, along with so many decorations around town. Um, in fact, as discussed by the board last time, we are increasing the decorations around town, east, west, uh, all, all over the place. And I think folks will, will see a nice increase in that. The second item in the business category is the business decoration contest. And our, 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 the thought for this is called making storefronts bright. Now, in this particular case, uh, we will draw three random winners of a $100 gift card, one per winner. And this is, a, is being used as a way to encourage people to visit local businesses, to see the decorated storefronts and shop local while they're here. Of course, it builds community holiday spirit and the decorated storefronts will need to be complete by the end of the business day on Friday, December 4th, with winners announced on Monday the 7th. We'll also post photos and videos of storefronts on the town website, social media, and other ways to promote these, all of these businesses all around town. So those are a couple of activities old and new for the business community. But of course, our residents here, it's so important to find ways to, to keep some traditions alive. And in some cases, um, make use of the family traditions and share them with other families and people around town. So the first, the first contest is called Deck the Homes. This is a home decoration contest. And again, 
we will draw three random winners for $100 gift cards. Now, these decorations can be inside or outside of the home. Some examples would include tree lighting or advent wreath lighting, menorah lighting, outside decorations, and other, other symbols of community and holiday spirit. So whether someone you know, decorates with, with one bulb or one wreath or an entire, entire tree, they're all eligible to participate in this. Um, they will actually send a photo of their, of their Deck the Homes entry to the town of Manio, info at manionc.gov, by the end of the day on Friday, December 11th. Three random winners will be drawn with their $100 gift cards on the 14th, and their photo submissions will be used on the town website and social media. Of course, we'll also post them periodically throughout the season to let folks see all the different traditions of families and folks throughout the town. Now, we're not just gonna do pictures though, there's another category called Manio Merriment. And in this case, we're looking for performances and entertainment. And some examples would be just a family could be, you know, uh, sing along, sing along around the, the piano. Or in the past, we've seen you know, we've seen folks doing uh, dance dances from the Nutcracker and other things. Uh, if there are choirs now, instrumentals, family sing along, caroling, what, whatever it might be, just ways to express that community and holiday spirit. And we'll ask folks to take a video of this, whether it's with their with their their phone or their camera or whatever and send those submissions to the town of Manio at the same time, that Friday, December 11th, we'll have three people drawn at random and uh, announce on Monday the 14th those winners. And of course, we'll use these to post on the town website, social media, and we really love the idea of this so people can share their holiday traditions with other folks around town. And uh, back at the end of this, we hope to have a nice video uh, video montage put together so we can, we can memorialize this long-term. Now, last but not least, we don't want to forget other, other activities, so we're going to call this category Food and Festivities, and we're going to kick off with a holiday food drive. Now, this holiday food drive is going to be coordinated and led by Manual Police Department and town staff. Uh, we'll be uh, working with uh, the, the local food pantries right here in Manio, and Magnolia Pavilion will be the headquarters and the drop-off site. Now, of course, dates and times will be arranged. We'll make sure to get that well publicized out in the community. Interestingly enough, our location at Magnolia Pavilion, we hope to, to continue to draw people to see the things going on in town because our second activity under food and festivities is called Letters to Santa. So we're obtaining a mailbox that will be located just across the street from Magnolia Pavilion at the Christmas tree lot downtown. And we'll have this mailbox there and we'll encourage people to come downtown, take a photo, tour the decorated storefronts, look at all the wreaths and decorations and shop local while they're there. Further, we will have letter, letters from the kids pulled out at random by, by Santa, and Santa will read them aloud on video, and we'll make sure to post those so the kids can hear their words read aloud by Santa Claus. And uh, um, we, we want to make sure, though, we also, and, and, and this, the, the kids aren't just sending a letter to Santa, they'll get a chance to see it, because Santa Claus is coming to town. Uh, our next step is to make sure that on the Oh, on the days that we had done some of the activities before, Santa Claus will be riding on the Roanoke Island Volunteer Fire Department fire truck through, desert, through the neighborhoods throughout the community on Friday evening and Saturday morning. In fact, he will use his magic to turn on the lights at the Christmas tree downtown and the lights at Cartwright Park and the P.I. and Cookhouse. We wanted to make sure that, that every neighborhood had an opportunity to see Santa and we'll have Christmas music playing so they can see they can see Santa, Santa, or hear Santa coming, uh, and then and then have the opportunity to uh, to participate in his merriment and his magic there. So these are the activities that we know we can pull off. These are the activities that we want to help bring to the town, and of and of course we would look forward to uh, working with our special events committee to not only make this year's this year's holiday work, but also look to the future and make sure we can continue these continue these traditions and more. Any comments of James? That's great, James. Remember a long time ago, Santa Claus used to ride around on the car truck, come down, everybody looked forward to that. Yeah, it did. All right. Any other comments? All right. Uh, James, just keep moving forward on this, I guess. Uh, you got to sign me like that full approval of the board, do what you want to, so that's good. All right, go ahead, uh, public hearing, James. Thank you, sir. Um, item number 6A on the agenda. This is the Zoning Text Amendment 2020-07Z to regulate boat lists. Now, this item had, uh, the board had, made, had directed the Planning and Zoning 
Planning and Zoning Board to come up with additional regulations on boat lifts. And of course, the language had been prepared. Now, I would like to let the members of the public understand tonight there will be a public hearing but the board will not vote on this matter until two, until two weeks. That would be on November 18th at the five o'clock workshop meeting. So tonight it's to hear from the public in terms of the public hearing uh, and hear what they have to say. Uh, because it is a public hearing, we'll open and close. We will, take, we will need a motion second and, yeah. uh, and a vote to both open and close the session. All right, can we have a motion to open the uh, comments or, uh, here are the people from the uh, boat lift situation. Uh, can we get a motion? I move to open the public hearing on the regulation of boat lifts. All right. Is there a second? Mr. Richie, I'll second. All right. Motion by Jason, second by Richie, that we open the public hearing on the regulation of boat lifts. All right, James, go ahead and handle it. Thank you, sir. Uh, we'll and we'll do the roll call to go ahead and open the public hearing based yeah, on. Yeah, that's right. Second. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, yes, sir. Um, Commissioner Borland, I or nay. Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay. Aye. And Commissioner Collins, I or nay. Aye. Okay. Um, if it's all right, I'm going to go ahead and interject. Uh, hey, hey, this is Commissioner <laughs> Pro Tem Selby. I'm on the line. Exactly. I, I understood that Mayor Pro Tem Selby had joined us for, for the record. So um, we'll go ahead and, and, and join Mayor Pro Tem Selby in the roll call vote to open the public hearing. Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the, uh, your, your pu public hearing is open. Um, what I'll do, if it's all right, um, I'm looking at the audience and I don't see anybody, uh, anybody from the public here in the audience. So I'll go ahead and turn around the computer screen. And if anybody would like the public publicly comment it at this hearing time, hit star nine on your phone and your hand will be raised on the screen. So we'll look around to see if anybody has raised their hand for the public hearing. Okay, so as we look up at the screen, we only have three attendees here tonight. So if anybody would like to make a uh, comment at the public hearing for the regulation of boat lifts, please hit star nine on your phone and your hand will be raised. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we do not seem to have uh, any hands okay. raised to comment on this public hearing. All right, now we, we have to close this hearing, don't we? Yes, sir. So this would require a motion second and a vote to go ahead and close the public hearing. Yeah, can we have a motion to close the public hearing on the uh, regulation of boat lifts? This is Darrell. I uh, motion to close public hearing on a regulation of boat lifts. All right. Is there a second? Second. Second. All right, uh, Mr. Mayor. By a, you, you, we've got a motion by Commissioner Collins. Who seconded? Who seconded it? I didn't hear him. Uh, Commissioner Burke, sir. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Rich. Uh, all right. Go ahead, James. Yes, sir. Uh, I will call vote to close the public hearing. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay. Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Uh, All right, Mr. Mayor, the, you got a unanimous, right. unanimous Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, you, you mentioned to the public that the vote wouldn't be until the next meeting. Do you also want to remind them that they can submit public comment for another 24 hours as well? Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor, our, our town attorney, Ben Gallup, has uh, what yeah. we, uh, wanted us to remind the public the, re the reason the vote's not told the next meeting, as we've done in prior sessions, is the recent session law by the state of North Carolina requires us to give an additional 24 hours should anyone choose to comment in, um, a mm -hmm. comment in written form within 24 hours of this meeting. Uh, anybody in the public who would like to make such a comment, please send your email to the town manager that email address is J Ayers, that's J A Y E R S at Manio NC.gov. We look forward to anybody who may choose to submit initial, additional comments, and also those comments then would be provided to the Mayor and Board of Commissioners uh, prior to their next meeting. All right, you made it very clear. All right, let's go on to B. Yes, sir. Item 6B, this is the Zoning Text Amendment 2020 08Z to update provisions applicable to college, university, and community college campuses. Um, we do have, uh, this is a, an, an additional one where we have 
um, the opportunity here to hear from the public. This also will not be voted on until November 18th to allow time for the additional comment. Uh, we, do we do have up on the screen a couple of elevations of, of, the, of the proposed uh, building, academic building at the new COA campus here in the town of Manio. Now, I understand though, even though that's a, a specific example of a potential building, this particular regulation applies to all college, university, and community college campuses uh, that may locate within town limits. So tonight, the only action would be to hold the public hearing and um, to, to hear the public on that, it would require a motion second and a vote to open the public hearing. All right, we'll declare the um, update for the uh, provisions to, for the hearing for community colleges and campuses. Uh, James, take a roll call. To, yes, sir. Did anybody make the motion? This is Commissioner Collins. I'll make the motion to open public hearing for colleges, universities, and community colleges. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Who, who is Rich? J Jason. Jason. Okay. I'm sorry. I can't. Uh, all right. We've got a motion to open public hearing on college, university, and community college, seconded by uh, Jason. All yes, right. Sir. We'll go ahead and do the roll call. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Bur Barland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? I'm sorry. <laughs> let, me, let me go back again. Well, Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? <laughs> aye. And Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? <laughs> and Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Uh. All right. So Mayor, motion is unanimous to open the public hearing. All right, let's open the public hearing. Go ahead, James. Yes, sir. The, the meeting room is still um, de devoid of folks here. However, I'll look up on the screen to see what, what, what attendees we have here. For any attendee who would like to um, make, make a comment, this public hearing, please hit star nine on your phone and that will raise your hand. And we'll look on the screen and see if anybody, any of the attendees are doing so. All right, we have three attendees on the line here. However, nobody has raised their hand yet. I will. Um, Certainly want to make sure to reinforce, if you want to speak, hit star nine on your phone. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we don't seem to have anybody raising their hand to make a uh, comment at the public hearing, sir. All right, uh, we got to have a motion to close the uh, public hearing in regards to the college, uh, community college campuses. Can we have a motion? This is Betty, I make a motion that we close public hearing uh, for community college. Okay. All right, is there a second? I'll second. This is uh, All right, uh, Jason, I got you. Uh, motion by Betty, seconded by Jason. We close the public hearing on the college, university, and community campuses. Uh, uh, take a roll call. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Uh, All right, Mr. Mayor, you've got unanimous to the close. All right, we will declare the uh, zoning text for the community college is closed. Uh, public comment, James. Yes, sir, and to, re to reinforce the previous comments so the public, as the public is listening, this, this also has the option for anybody in the public to submit their, their uh, written comments on the, on the zoning text amendment to the town manager within 24 hours of the meeting. And again, that's J Ayers, J-A-Y-E-R-S, at manionc.gov. All right. Go ahead, James. Yes, sir. Item number seven. Have a comment. Yes, sir. And this is for information. If it's allowed, I'll go ahead and read the instructions for our listening audience. Members of the public are invited to address the Board of Commissioners on any topic. Public comment is not intended to require the Board to answer any impromptu questions or to take any action on items brought up during the public comment period. Speakers will address all the comments to the Board as a whole and not one individual commissioner. Discussions between speakers and members of the audience will not be allowed. Time limits are three minutes per person or five minutes per group. Please identify yourself and location so that your statements can be recorded. 
All right, James, open it up. Yes, sir. Uh, we still we do not have anybody in the general public in the audience. I'll turn around to the, the, the board here. And it looks like we may have an addition additional attendees now. So we are up to four attendees. And uh, any of the attendees, if you'd like to make a public comment, um, that would be <coughs> star nine on your phone. So if you hit star nine, it will raise your hand and uh, we, will, we will call you out for, um, for an opportunity to speak. Members of the public, if you'd like, anybody like to speak, you hit star nine on your phone and we'll look for your hand raised. Mr. All right, James. Yes, sir. Oh, go ahead. Understand. If you'd like me to proceed with the agenda, we'll move on to I. Yeah, uh, go, go ahead. I thought somebody had getting ready to comment, but they didn't. Yes, sir. Go ahead, James. Okay, item number eight. This is new business. These items are for action. 8A, this is the Dare County Arts Council Cultural Affairs Funding. In this particular example, at the prior board meeting, uh, there was a presentation made by Executive Director Chris Sowen regarding the possibility of changing the first Friday funding uh, and changing it over to the sponsorship of the courthouse sessions. Now, as indicated in the staff report available to the public and to the members of the board, there are some options to make that happen. Um, one of the ways is simply for the board to say, yes, you can use that money for the courthouse sessions. A second way that, because in the comments of the board, there was a discussion of giving them, giving the Arts Council flexibility to program their stuff. An alternate method was called out, um, a second scenario or scenario two was called out in which we simply move it to the DCAC events line item and they can program their available funds as they see fit in support of the town of Manio. Now, in addition to the, that, that issue that was the original ask of the DCAC at the last meeting, there's also a third item, and this came up as part of the commissioner's comments. And one of those, one, one member suggested raising the Arts Council allocation from its current level up to $10,000. So in that particular case, that addition, uh, sources for that additional funding have, were identified in the staff report within the cultural affairs segment of the budget so there is available funding should the should the board decide to do that. All right. Can we have uh, any commissioners' comments or feelings or how you where we want to go with this? Um, can you refresh my memory? How much money were we talking um, that they currently have, and how much are we talking about increasing it to? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, their current allocation, their three line items total $7,400 in their current funding appropriation. And, and what are we asking to increase it to? There was a, uh, a yes, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, there was a, uh, a suggestion by a member of the board to increase that to $10,000. So that'd be a $2,600 uh, total increase on their funding. And where did you say the $2,600 will come from? Yes, in, in the uh, cultural affairs section of the budget that funds things like special events and items like that, we had indicated that, for example, there are events that, are, that would not be held this year, for example, New Year's Eve. So in that case, that, that funding could be transferred to the DCAC events line item to allow DCAC to program that, uh, program that funding. So how, once you take $2,600 out of that, special event line item, what would be in there? What's the balance after that? Um, coming out of the um, coming out of the New Year's, because the New Year's Eve 20,000 allocation is totally is expected to be totally unused this year, that would still leave uh, 17,400 17, in that $20,000 appropriation. This is moving money from one area to another area, basically. Yeah. Yes, yes, Commissioner Burke, and this is actually it's it's transferring from light items even within the same section of the budget. It's not coming from different departments within the same departmental uh, allocation. Ready? Um, yes, no, I I just wanted to know. I knew what um, moving money is. I worked in budgeting, but I just wanted to know the uh, balance and the things like that. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Richie. That's fine. That's another question I had. 
Oh, okay. All right. Any other questions, Jason? Daryl? No, I, this is Jason. I, I mean, we're taking, we're, we're proposing taking an extra $2,600 and from somewhere it's going to go on you and put it to good use. So I'm, I'm for upping it to, to 10 if, uh, if folks agree. All right. Uh, any other comments? Not yet. I want to hear anybody else. This, this is Daryl. I think it's a good idea to increase it to $10,000. All right. Uh, James, any problem with that? No, sir. Those, that source of funds is available should the door right. decide to do Can, that. Somebody uh, enter a motion that we raise it $10,000 and uh, approve the funding. Do you need two motions yes. to, to increase it and also to authorize it? Yeah. Yes, yes, sir. And and we you, it can be the, either two motions, one, to put it all in the DCAC events line item, and two, to increase that total line item to 10,000, or you can make that a just a compound motion that to move. Why, why can't you Why can't you wrap them all in one? Yes, sir. I think that was the suggestion. I, yes. I would yeah. move to consolidate all DC funding in the general DCAC event slide item and increase that funding yeah. from 7,400 to 10,000 using unused funds in the cultural affairs budget. Good motion. Is there a second? Mr. Richie, I'll second. Who's this, Richie? Yes. Okay. Motion by Jason, seconded by Richie that we, uh, Approve the funds requested by the Arts Council and increasing the amount to uh, how much? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. All right. Ten thousand uh, dollars. Take a, a roll. Yes, sir. Uh, roll call vote. We'll start with Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. We'll go to Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Okay. And Mr. Town Manager, this is Eddie Mann. I've, I've been on the line for a few minutes now, and I'll vote aye for that now, too. Thank, uh, thank, you, Commission, uh, thank you, Commissioner Mann. And Mr. Mayor, you have um, a unanimous vote on that motion. Okay. Uh, the motion carries, and uh, you'll take care of everything, James. Yes, sir. And, all right. Let's move on. Depends. Item number 8B on the agenda. This is the mid-year bonus program. Uh, during prior during prior fiscal years, there had been uh, there had been a um, a, a mid year bonus pro bonus program uh, offered to the employees in uh, in right around the holiday time. In this case, it was intended to reward and incentivize staff for excellent performance of job duties. And by um, timing it in the middle of the year, it's enough time to assess whether uh, the performance had warrants a bonus. In the prior fiscal years, it had been the proposed bonus amount was three hundred dollars. $350 per employee, and that is consistent with the last few years' levels. Um, and that that particular one would, would the, the funding for that is in the budget. However, it is considered highly appropriate for that to be the discretionary of the board, not, uh, not, uh, not anticipated. So even though it's in the budget, I still believe it's very, very important if the board, that the board should, uh, should vote on that, should they think it's acceptable and appropriate. James, let me ask you: Is this in lieu of the Christmas bonus we used to give? Yes, sir. We just we just stopped uh, calling it the. Christmas. I just, I'm just asking you. Yes, sir. The, I think it may, may have been called the Christmas bonus years ago. And I think it was just kind of rephrased to um, a, a, the just the mid-year bonus. Just it's just it's just semantics, to be honest. Yeah, I, just a question. Yes, sir. All right. What's the feelings of the board? Any comments from the board? Heard from the town manager. This commission call, I think, is a good, good idea. Okay. Anybody else? Dale, would you make it in the form of a motion? Yeah, I'll motion to authorize the payment of the mid-year bonus of three hundred and fifty dollars to all employees. All right. Is a second to the motion. Is Eddie Mann, I second. All right, there's a motion to second by Eddie Mann that we uh, authorize payment for a mid-year bonus for the employees of the amount of $350. Uh, take a roll call, James. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. 
And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Uh, All right. Mr. Mayor, you have okay. a unanimous vote, sir. Okay, you have your Christmas bonus. I guess we're done with it. Uh, uh, old business, James. Yes, sir. Item, item number nine, old business. These, all these items are for action. Item number 9A, this is appointment of special events committee members. Uh, in this particular example, the, um, the special events committee uh, was, was officially approved as an amendment to the code of ordinances. And in fact, it was chartered back in September. Uh, there, there was, of course, a good bit of outreach and recruitment. And even before then, there had been uh, outreach, including by um, members of the elected body, uh, including Mayor Pro Tem Selby and others. The, um, we wanted to make sure to get the word out to as many members of the community as possible uh, and any stakeholders who might have interest and in, in their ta time and talents in, in these events. Now, we, um, we did receive a good number of applicants we did, um, we did have a, a good group here in now, but in the time that we've been soliciting applica applications, we did have uh, one, or two, one or two people withdraw, one wanted to serve on the Christmas subcommittee only. Um, one had been elected to public office, a couple others had been appointed to serve on other committees, but yet we are left with a, a very good slate of, of really, really, really nice people and uh, dedicated people who are right. here to serve. All right, James, let me ask you a couple of questions. Uh, how many are we appointing tonight? Are we, uh, are we setting up a whole new special events committee? Yes, sir. We're, we're now setting it up in accordance with, with the revisions of the Code of Ordinance. How, how many members? Three to seven uh, is what we're allowed. Okay. Just ask it. I, and I, will, I will say if it's okay, and we may have folks listening. It, because we have more applicants than slots available, um, we want to make sure, if a, even if a candidate is not selected this time, we would very much welcome that person to participate in special events, either via subcommittee or other volunteer service. And in fact, some folks really do prefer to uh, uh, participate, say, only in the Christmas events, or one person was uh, only on 4th of July. So we certainly uh, would welcome their continued interest, uh, even if... Doesn't you know work. this this could take all night on this one, so I'm I'm either going to suggest something or you're going to have to narrow it down and keep from people being embarrassed or something, James, because I don't know how many members you got on this list, but it's quite a few. And uh, how would you do this to come up with? Has 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 the uh, commission decide on three members or seven members or five members? Wouldn't we need to do that, James? The the, the board, um, through its nominate, if the board chooses to make nominations, they can nominate up to seven. And what what, what may happen here is if um, if you get more than seven nominations, then it would have to be narrowed down by a vote. Um, but if you get less than seven and more than three, then it works itself out. But I, I certainly would defer to the, the members of the board who have had an opportunity to see the uh, applications and the list of names here. Well, I've read all the applications, but I don't know but two or three of the whole people on the list. I mean, I just don't know them. I'm sorry, but uh, I don't even know their names and who they are, and I want to be fair to them, too. So it's going to be a little bit awkward unless you come up with some suggestions to make it so uh, everybody has an equal chance. Can I make a suggestion here, uh, Commissioner Borland? Um, you're right. I mean, it's... Uh, um, it is a little bit awkward, but it is what it is. And so we all, um, hopefully, I mean, it, it's, it's, first of all, James and Michelle and anyone else, we got great feedback. We got great applications. Um, and some folks really put a lot of work into the application as well. So, I mean, everyone's probably in the same boat as me, which is to say, I can speak on uh, a handful of these folks, um, you know, and I can provide that feedback and, and review and kind of um, go around the room and, and see what comment we have and then do some, uh, um, see if we want to make some appointments. I noticed on this list, there's a couple people on here that had sat on this committee before. Will they be grandfathered into the new committee? Um, uh, Commissioner, because we because this is chart, in effect chartered at the September second meeting, we would need to appoint um, appoint folks as opposed to grandfathering. Okay. And going back to prior minutes when there were kind of ad hoc appointments to a special events committee, 
um, the, that that actually kind of goes back a number of years. So um, it would be, I, I, and, and some of those folks chose to only work on certain special events. So uh, that, that idea of working on a clean slate where it is now properly chartered, I think uh, it, it's best for us to go ahead and uh, look, at all the can look at all the candidates um, since the prior version of this wouldn't have been, um, wouldn't have been the chartered version okay. that we have now. I just feel like if you're on a special events committee, you should be able to put all, this, all the events and not be able to pick, well, I just want to be on the Christmas committee, or I just want to be on the Halloween committee. If you're on the committee, you're on the committee. That's why I, 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 I agree with you, uh, Richie. Well, and I, I think, James, I'm glad you said this because I was, I was thinking it, but, um, you know, I hope we can <laughs> provide this list to whoever is on right. these committees so they can proactively reach out to folks because, um, you know, you have the general special events steering committee, basically, and then maybe subcommittees for each event, or, you know, Christmas may have a handful of other um, working groups they put together. Now, the people that was previously on this special event committee, did you reach? Did you reach out to them? Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem. So you'll you'll see, um, for example, um, one of the one of the people who, who was on that committee previously is shown on the list. We also have a couple of people who previously had only worked on the Christmas subcommittee, but they understand that this is, as the commissioner mentioned earlier, uh, that this is uh, this special events committee is intended to look at all special events, not just an individual one. And I actually, that's why we did have one person who had applied, decided to pull uh, withdraw because they really pr preferred only to serve on the Christmas subcommittee. And, and I respect that with well, some great volunteers. Well, I, 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 I think that they should be able to choose um, which committee because the Christmas committee probably will be a whole lot more work more detailed um, than the general you know than anything else so we we'll probably need more hands on deck for Christmas for decorating and judging and things like that so I'm not with that um, one or nothing you know I think they should be able to choose the project and for instance, like they may can do not can do the spring, but they can in the winter. So I think that should be open to you know, what project they should they want to do. Everybody's talents are different. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to uh, cut you off there. I, I I agree with that. Although I think this group is is not about each different event you know we're not we're not talking about appointing the christmas committee or the day or days committee the group that we're putting together is the special events committee so all special events and then they'll piece together other task force working groups on, that they'll work specifically on and some of those members will be a part of those you know if somebody you know can uh, but this this group will be over all special events uh, we haven't voted on it yet, so I, I, like I said, I still think that um, we could do a core group, like you said, a uh, special event, and then I think you use the term task force for different things, for different subcommittees, <clears throat> which is okay with me, but like I said, I don't think it should be all you to be on this whole board and do all events or none. I don't think that's what we want to project. All right, comments. I haven't had any. I haven't had anything that I've firmed up with yet that I'm satisfied with. But I mean, it, it's all sounds good, really. But how are you going to narrow it to seven people? I, with, I, I don't know how many is on this list, but it's a group of them. Well, I went through and, and took notes on on everybody, and and obviously I've. Um, I, I, like I said, I, I can speak to a handful, and I, I did some Facebook stalking um, and checking out some other folks as well. Um, and so I'll share. I, I don't want to, you know, overtake the whole conversation. So I'm going to uh, share a, a handful of thoughts I had going through, um, based on what I read in the applications and, and folks I know. Um, the first one was Jamie Anderson, um, who owns the bookstore, and she's so active in the community. She does so much work and, and um, she's a huge partner to the town. Um, 
and, and so I think that it, it she's a fit. Um, Dana uh, Lizenby is someone we've worked with. Uh, um, she owns Coastal Blooms in, in town. And so as a florist kind of events are um, definitely in her wheelhouse. Um, and I think um, she'd be a good fit as well. Um, Ruth Stetson was uh, a, a long, passionate application. And, uh, and I think that is someone who would give a, um, a, a new, fresh perspective and, and some creative good ideas. Um, and then, you know, I had the thought between um, folks like Tim and the Woodies who have been around, you know, I think it's important to have some folks that um, have, have been involved uh, for a while and know the, what's, how things have gone, relationships with vendors and things like that. Uh, so those were, those were some of my, my main thoughts as I went through. And I'd be um, anxious to hear other folks' thoughts as well. Well, um, Commissioner Borland, you don't name six people. So it's nothing but one more left. I and, haven't put anybody up for, for appointment yet. I just wanted to give my, my feedback on. on but let me give you mine, um, which is good. And I think all of them are excellent. I know um, all six that you named with the exception of one. And they're all very active and excellent supporters in the town of Manio. I think they're business owners too, so I'm sure they'll be affiliated with the Downtown Association. Um, with that said, as I told y'all on July 1st, at our July 1st meeting, we need to be more diverse. Yes, we do need the business owners. We need those that has been active in the town of Manio, but we also need some fresh new people as well so that you can take that knowledge that they have in the past and somebody new and hey, that could be an awesome combination, but I just think we need to be more broad. And when you Facebook stalk, I hope that you, would, you know, stalk, get to know the other people that has been recommended. I have recommended two applicants. And if, if I don't know if Jamie, you can look it up, that's been recommended for special events for over a year, over a year. Two African American women who is very interested. They're not in the town of Manio, but they live just a couple miles out of town Manio. And like I said, refer to July first. We need to be diverse. And if you don't know them, Commissioner Borland or any other commissioner, um, let me know. I'll let you know. Introduce you because they're being in Manio all their lives. So I, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little bit uh, aggravated that they had to wait this long. All right, did you, Betty, you said you were gonna name them? Nicole Thrash and Denise Mars, Nisi Mars, born and raised here, their family's been here. I, Jamie, can you tell uh, Manager Ayers when they put their application in? Please tell me. Yes, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, the dates I'm showing in the spreadsheet here from the town clerk show applications received from those two candidates on January 14th, 2020. No, they wasn't. There was before them. It was August. It was August. Okay. They might, okay. They might be recorded then, but they were submitted in August. Of night. Uh, this commissioner Collins, do they... Do these people have to live in the town of Manio or? They don't have to live to in the town of Manio. I thought the only board that you have to live in the town of Manio, from my understanding, is the planning board. Is that correct? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, the, that, that's a perfect example. So we have this particular one in the charter did not require um, town residents as a, uh, as a qualification, as a requirement. Well, Betty's right. All right. I'm going to tell you the truth. I'm over a barrel myself. 
I, I kind of agree with what Betty's saying, and I, I know Jamie Anderson. I certainly know she's very active in everything she does, and we got one here, uh, Tim Teeple. I don't really know him, but he's been very, very active in downtown affairs. I know that, and he, he is a participant. Uh, but uh, like I say, that's the only two, and, of course, Nicole and uh, Nisi. But I, 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 I'm really staying out of this right now because this, this, I see it is getting really touchy. Well, it is touchy. It's, it's very it touchy. It is touchy, yeah. It's supposed but to be. But... When you try to include all parts of our community and you only can still consistently. Include... Oh, Betty, I'm agreeing, I'm agreeing with you because if, if, James has alluded to that they do not have living time, so that opens them up. I mean, to serve. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that the applicant to Commissioner Board and Board name, excellent candidates, excellent. They done put that work in the town of Mandio. I appreciate them. But we need to bring in more diversity. Um, as I said before, if you, you know, you elected me for a fresh voice, you elected me to bring more diversity, and I'm not going to um, stray from that. Richie, Eddie, Daryl. Yeah, let's go with um, Jamie. Uh, this is Rich, I'm sorry. Jamie, Tim, Nicole, Nisi, and the Woodies. That's a compromise. That's the only fly I was. How many was that? Uh, it could be between three and seven, right? Yes, sir. That was six. Who did you say again, Richie? I'm sorry. He said Eddie. Two, three. I said Jamie, uh, Jamie Tim, Macy, Nicole, Nicole Tim, Tim, and Carl Williams. Carl and you, yes, so that, that list would include six people. I'll tell you, um, I, had, I had on my list that I highlighted, I had uh, I highlighted seven, and I'm not, you know, I'm not nominating anybody, just throwing out there two, but it's, it kind of overlaps yours. I highlighted uh, Jamie Anderson, Dana Lisenby, Nisi Morris, Ruth Stetson, Tim Teeple, Nicole Thrash, and Carl Woody. All right. Well, wouldn't we? Has Ruth Stetson been mentioned yet? That'll be the seven, won't it? Yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. So, following Commissioner Mann's comments, the the, the folks that I'm seeing right now that have multiple votes, or more, I'm sorry, these are not votes. I'm sorry. <laughs> these are uh, 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 suggested sure. names prior to a motion. But we have seven right now, that, uh, according to my list. All right, you read them out, James. Who you who you've heard okay. what? That makes that makes it eight because Mr. and Mrs. Woody are are, uh, are two separate. So we've got uh, Jamie and we've got Ms. Anderson, Ms. Lisenby, we've got Ms. Morris, we've got Ms. Stetson, we've got Mr. Teeple, we've got Ms. Thrash, and we've got Mr. and Mrs. Woody. Yeah. Well, let me let me ask you this. You said Mr. and Mrs. Woody. We had to include them in one because the husband and wife team. I'm all for it because they've been very active. But I mean, I'm not recommending them, of course, but. Uh, you got a husband and wife. Uh, looks to me like they could serve as one team or something, but I, I don't know. I don't know. This, this is this is this is Eddie, and just my opinion about it. If you, they're kind of a package deal. So if you put one on the board, you name one, then you get both of them really. But oh but yeah, for the that, seven, well, that's, seven, that's, yeah. I, th I think I think any board over seven members is going bulky and cumbersome, but that's just my feeling. He was just asking. James, James, didn't you just name seven, or was it eight? Yes, sir. When we named eight, that didn't that eight included uh, Mr. and Mrs. Woody. Now, and, yeah. and chatting and chatting with the the, the town attorney, um, we were talking about. I mean, these are the. We, for the sake of the sake of well, the, let me ask you this: Why can't we say Sue Woody? Because I'm like Eddie; she's going to be talking to her husband. Her husband's going to be telling her what to do a little bit, and so we get two. We get two for one, and that'll give us a seven. 
Yes, yes, sir, Mr. Mayor. And for the sake of um, for the sake of our, our 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 valued colleagues there, perhaps I might suggest if that motion should come up, that the, the motion could mention uh, that the outreach could be made to Mr. and Mrs. Woody, and they could be the designee to the committee. That would be good. At that point, you would have seven if you if the motion was crafted to have the other six names, and then the last name being. Uh, the designee of Mr. or Mrs. Woody as they, as they desire. All right. All right. As a compromise, how would the board feel about this recommendation that James just suggested? Sounds great. Everybody pretty well approve that? It's there. I approve. I do. I do. This is I'm, 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 I'm trying. You all know what I'm trying to do. This is a hell of a mess for all of us. And we got, to have, we got to have a consensus that we're kind of in agreement and not upset with each other. It sounds pretty good to me, but I don't have a vote in it. Y'all do. And Mr. Mayor, if you would like me to just re repeat for the repeat for the record what I believe. Yeah, I believe. yeah. So in this case, the slate of candidates would include Ms. Anderson, Ms. Lisenby, Ms. Morris, Ms. Stetson, Mr. Teeple, Ms. Thrash, and the, and the designee of Mr. and Mrs. Woody for a total of seven candidates for the Special Events Committee, should that be made into a motion. All right. You need a motion for this? I'll yeah. <laughs> Tear it up. I'll make the motion to nominate these people, as stated earlier. All right. Uh, Rich has made the motion. We accept the seven members as suggested. <laughs> We'll worry it we'll worry that way. Uh, Mr. Darrell, I'll second. Okay, good. A motion by Richie, seconded by Darrell, that we accept seven members as suggested by the commission to be on the uh, special events committee. Uh, take a poll. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? I think you lost. Yes, we'll, uh, we'll I'll look over to our, our IT director and I'll, I'll continue down the list and we'll see if we if for some reason there was a technical glitch here. Uh, next up, Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, I or nay? Aye. Now we'll try one more time for Mayor Pro Tem Selby on the line. Hi. There she is. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you have a unanimous vote on the motion for the slate. All right. All right. Uh, the, the vote is unanimous. We have our uh, appointment uh, to the uh, Special Events Committee, which will be seven members, and you'll notify them, James, and you're going to talk to uh, the Woodies, right? Yes, sir. I, I, you, you handle it the way you need to. How about that? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. <clears throat> okay. Next up on the agenda, this is um, this is also old business. This is the Shallow Bag Bay Dredging Grant local share. Uh, as indicated at the prior meetings, the Board of Commissioners did receive a briefing on this project as part of the budget options for initiatives. This is the this dredging project is um, critical to the uh, the marina, the Elizabeth II and it is connecting that area all the way out to Shallow Bag Bay and range five out in, in through Shallow Bag Bay to Roanoke Sound. Uh, in this case, the dredging project will improve marine travel, both commercial and recreational, as well as boating safety within town limits, which have been extended by the state legislature to include Shallow Bag Bay. Um, the importance of allowing the Elizabeth II replica vessel to go out for critical maintenance is also Im important to note. Now, Dare County has been managing this important project at no cost to the town of Manio. However, their project manager, and I've also coordinated with their county manager reports that um, there is a need to, uh, in accordance with state law, to, to get some local match to connect up to range five. Now, in this case, the, 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 pr the preferred would be to get a 50 foot channel to match the other areas and to minimize the need for more current um, and more, or sooner dredging. That 50-foot channel, though, would cost 43,000 local match from the town, 
Uh, if a smaller 30 foot channel was desired by the, by the board, that'd be 26,000. Now the, the proposed source of funds for this, uh, for this local match would be the unused allocation for the manual resident re utility relief fund. Uh, that particular fund of $100,000 is projected to have at least $90,000 left over from the initial appropriation. Uh, the Dare County project manager and county manager indicated a timely decision is critical to make this happen this year as they already have a contractor arranged but need to try and do it in this season. So this, it would be up to the board, however, since this was not an original appropriation, it'd be up to the board to allow the transfer of unused funds from the, from the utility, from that, uh, that relief fund, which is going unused for either the 26 or $43,000 grant match. All right, you heard. Uh, let, me, let me ask you a question. Uh, the rest of the dredging is, is 50 feet. Yes, sir. We understood the rest was 50 feet, and that's all been paid. Dare County has that uh, has that already. That funding is already in place, and the pro project's already going. Or it's already, I'm sorry, is already in place. It's just waiting for us to determine whether we can do this last little connection. And the 30 feet. Thirty foot. Uh, yes, yes, sir. Uh, yes, yes, Commissioner. The thirty foot is enough to satisfy the state requirements. However, I, I, I understand that it would be better to connect at the fifty feet of the others, so that it's it wouldn't basically it, it wouldn't uh, require dredging quite as soon, and it would be consistent with the rest of the proposed work. This is range. Ranges. Range five. So on the exhibit uh -huh. in the staff board, it's, it's range five where it, where it's out there and where we connect up to the main channel in in Roanoke Sound. Well, wouldn't that allow the uh, basin to be cleaned out up to the Elizabeth Two, which is where, where we have most of our dockage for the big boats? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That is correct. Yeah. In other words, the boats that can't get in here now is bumping bottom. It'll open them up uh, for better usage of our own properties in the waterfront. Because some of the boats can't come in here because they're too, uh, they're not deep enough draft. I mean, they are too deep draft. And Elizabeth too is in that same situation. They, yeah, well, that, that's what it, the Dale, That's what it's being done for, really. Yeah. To get to, and they, to get they, this, they need to get it out of here so they can get to, do some rehab on it. That's right. Yeah, you're right. You're right, Daryl. This is a man. I think we're on the fifty-foot channel. I, I didn't hear that. I said, I think we should go ahead and, and conform with the, the rest of them and do the 50 foot uh, deep channel. Yeah, I dredging. think so too. I, I'm, I'd be for it, but I don't have a vote. This is Eddie, man. I agree, Daryl. I think it needs to be 50 foot because the first storm we get, it's going to narrow up and narrow up. It could be 30. <laughs> it's going to yeah, it'll be 30 fast. Jason? And Jason, how much money do we have in the utility relief for? Do we have enough money for that forty-two, forty-three thousand? Yes, uh, yes, sir. We had identified in that fund that we would need less than ten thousand out of the hundred uh, hundred thousand appropriation because we looked at the uh, the and the one approved application and the one that has come in, and then even if you take the maximum number of accounts who had been passed due. We wouldn't even exceed ten thousand, so that remains that the means we have got ninety thousand remaining that we could be transferred. Uh, I think we should go ahead and do it. All right, uh, Darrell, would you make the motion? Uh, yeah, I'll make the motion to uh, uh, approve the fifty-foot dredging of the uh, what. 50 foot dredging at the cost of $43,000 from the Manio Utility Relief Fund. All right. Is there a second? I'll second. This is Jason. Uh, all right, Jason. All right. Motion by Daryl, second by Jason. We, we uh, allocate the money uh, uh, presented by the uh, town manager for the dredging of Shallow Back Bay uh, at 50 foot. Uh, take a poll. James. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. 
Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Uh, Mayor, you have a unanimous vote for that motion. Okay, we have a unanimous uh, a vote. Uh, we, uh, it's been passed and approved and we're on go. Go on to see. Yes, sir. Item number 9C, this is the de declared emergency bonus program. This is, a this is a particular topic that had been brought up a couple of times by, um, by members, members of the Board of Commissioners who had indicated interest in providing a bonus to employees to recognize their service during the declared emergency for the COVID pandemic. Um, in, the staff, in the staff report, we did, we did acknowledge this to be a declared emergency, and, but we're, we're, our response is in, in accordance with our incident action plan. So, but all departments have been involved in the response and continue to, to do that. Uh, all work has been performed without interruption, even when we had a recent COVID-related disruption at Town Hall. All services continued unabated. Uh, this particular item was brought up by members of the Board of Commissioners. I was asked to bring it up again, um, but in all transparency to the public, it is, it is being shown on the agenda. It is a separate item from that mid-year bonus that the Board already approved. So wanted to make sure this is shown as a separate item uh, in all transparency. And also, it was not appropriate, it was not an appropriation in the original budget because it wasn't anticipated at that time. So in this particular case, um, the the one of the award the, the the award level that had been initially recommended by a board member uh, was the five hundred dollar bonus level, and the cost for that would be twenty thousand four hundred dollars, including all the applicable payroll deductions. Even after the forty three thousand that was just appropriated for out of the out of the utility relief fund out of the unused ninety thousand, uh, both that forty three thousand allocation and this twenty thousand four hundred dollar allocation would still uh, leave available funding there. So should the board decide to proceed, I want to make sure it's very clear what the cost was, where the source of funds were, uh, and what the value of the award would be. All right, what is the feeling of the board? Any comments or any, where we go with it? Is this an emergency? What's the title of this um, money, the $500? Uh, yes, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, it's being called the Declared Emergency Bonus Program. To make it clear that this particular program, as it was, um, it was well, I think the, the board member that originally brought this up talked about it being kind of a COVID bonus, but I almost, I almost hate to call it that. But to be clear with the public, it's while it, this is while we're in a declared state of emergency due to COVID-19. So I just thought this was a better title than calling it the COVID program. Did the town receive any COVID funds or any for for salary or anything like that? Yes, Mayor Pro Tem Selby. The town did get an allocation uh, of approximately uh, approximately $26,000 from Dare County via the Federal CARES Act. However, that could not be used for a program like this. It was actually used for our, our law enforcement officers in accordance with the guidance from the feds. So in that particular case, that that funding that we got in and we uh, we had accepted as a board, we, uh, we did a, an agreement with Dare County to accept that funds that went to uh, law, law enforcement. Okay. And this would be a bonus for all employees, right? Yes, sir. Okay. I, I think we should reward the employees for working in such a dangerous working environment in that situation when state of emergency was issued by the state. I think we should at least give them a bonus for that. Uh, James, would this bonus program be administered to all the employees or one one employee or a few employees singled out or how or what? Yes, sir, all employees, and that would be full-time. Uh, okay, okay, I agree with that. I agree with Daryl on that because I, I'd be opposed to singling out one person getting the bonus and the other's not getting it. Now, for part-time employees, would that be a prorated part of five hundred? Um, no, ma'am. It was it would the the proposal that I understood for when it was first brought up by the uh, mem members of the board was it was intended for all employees. Uh, I I would point out that our uh, that our part-time um, that our part-time employees who work for the town we've got we've got a few um, 
we one of them one of them was a, a, instrumental in write, actually writing our incident action plan is responsible for emergency operations. Another one is in law enforcement has and has performed work during this time. And another one is our building inspector who continued to provide services uh, and inspecting and helping keep our construction industry going. So I think all of them have worked during this time and have made uh, significant contributions. So the question, the answer is all employees doesn't matter if they're full or part time, which yes. is fine. Yeah, I, I just want to know. All right, can we have a motion? I'll make the motion, Mr. Richard. Okay. Uh, is there a second, Richard? Motion. I'm not going to word it. Mr. Darrell, I second Richard's motion for the $500 bonus uh, for the emergency, the de uh, declared emergency bonus. $500. Okay. Got a motion and a second as, in regards to the emergency bonus program. Uh, take a poll, James. Yes, sir. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Selby, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, aye or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, aye or nay? Aye. And Commissioner Collins, aye or nay? Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, okay. the vote is unanimous for the motion. Okay, we'll declare the motion uh, passed. Uh, all right. Mayor comments. I only have one question, James, and it's to you. Uh, should we, or are we, or should we leave it alone for the time being? We're getting, we're not getting ahead of ourselves on transitional housing or affordable housing or some type of other housing. But how are we going to handle this? Do we need a committee eventually? Have a housing committee or something of that nature, or just let you handle it? I mean, I am, I'm not objective with just letting you handle it, but I, we're, we're going to have to have some guidance somewhere to put it all in one direction if we're going forward. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. So we, we do have a couple of different options on this. Of course, I've been keeping in close contact, including uh, this past week, with the county manager because their particular project seems to be moving forward most quickly uh, and yeah. accelerated it by hiring uh, design professionals to work on that. So what I'd love to do is to um, bring back to the board at their December well, meeting, update on that and some suggestions as to well, some. Okay. You, you've answered my question. I think that's good. Just we need, we need to get a sense of direction more than anything else and don't be rushing into it. So I, I personally think that you ought to handle it uh, for the time being. Uh, that's just my suggestion. That's just my comments. And uh, that's all they are from the mayor. Uh, all right, let's. Eddie, take off. Uh, I'm sorry for being late. I apologize. Um, but I want to thank everybody for um, putting in for the special events committee. I know it's putting themselves out there. I want to thank them all for, uh, for doing that. And thank you to the town employees for keeping up the good work. That's it. Okay, Richie. I'm good. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, Jason. I think I'm good tonight. Okay, Christine, she never came on, did she? No. Daryl? Uh, oh. I'm Darryl? good, man. Okay. I'm good. Betty? Um, I wanted to just to say, as I looked at, I, that's why I didn't answer the, while ago I went silent, I was looking to check those applications, and the applications are dated. My apologies to you, um, Manager Ayers. Uh, my first initial meeting with Nisi and Nicole was in August of 2019, so still, I do want to say you are correct, and I'm sorry, go on record for that, but the application was submitted July, I mean, January of 2020. Uh, as far as the task force um, for the communications with the county about affordable housing, I, I would like to have updates on that and um, see where we're going at with that affordable housing. All right. Uh, James, you'll keep Betty informed totally, won't you? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Betty, we're all human. I make mistakes every day. <laughs> all right. Uh, anything else coming before the board? All right. We've got a workshop. Y'all, when is it, James? Yes, sir. That would be 5 o'clock on November 18th, 2020. November 18th, 5 o'clock. All right. Anything else coming before the board? Can we have a motion to adjourn? 
I'm going to recess this meeting until now. Oh, I'm sorry. Recess, yes. I'm sorry. Go ahead. James, was that you? Yeah, what? Well, yep, I, I moved to recess uh, until November 18th, 5 p.m. Yeah, is there a second? Yeah, is there a second? All right, a motion by Jason, uh, seconded by Daryl, that we uh, recess until November the 18th, 5 o'clock, to the workshop meeting. All right. Uh, Do we have to have a motion on that, James? Yes, sir. And if it's all right, I can go ahead and call the roll call. Yeah, go ahead. Yes, sir. Mayor Pro Tem Selby, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Mann, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Borland, I or nay? Aye. Commissioner Burke, I or nay? Aye. And Commissioner All Powell. right. Go ahead. Daryl? Aye. All right. We stand uh, recess until November the 18th. All right. See you all then. Take care.